is yes for the opportunity easy full screen okay so my topic obviously when we talk about viability is mostly in a setting of um, heart failure low ejection fraction by definition less than 40 percent and many of them have multi vessel theory now a couple of important points this is a short presentation obviously assessment all of our familiar may not be available the facilities but in terms of prognosis we know but I think more interesting recent times, what is the importance of viability? If we do an investigation, which is costly, or what is the importance in terms of, uh, probably most more important to the patients. So if you have viability or no viability, does it make any difference in terms of going for surgery or medical therapy, knowing that uh, we have much more better medical therapy at recent times, including a couple of medicines that already been discussed, like RNA and SGL2. And uh, on the reverse side, uh, does no viability means it's a dead end and patients will not benefit revascularization. And these are some of the important things we know that is not easy and certain we'll couple try to address towards the end of this presentations. So when you talk about dysfunction, low ejection fraction, obviously somebody of scarred myocardium is it's a medical therapy and personally you have much more to offer in terms of medical therapy. Viable again, it may be hibernation, which is more of an insidious process, chronic ischemia leading to micro dysfunctions, which are going to recover after revascularization. And revascularization means mostly is a case of coronary bypass surgery in a case of low ejection fraction. And stunning is a, in terms of acute ischemia, although these are sometimes overlapping terms and one can lead to the other. In terms of methods that we have, uh, obviously the gold standard is once we assess viability and we do revascularization like a bypass surgery and it recovers, then obviously that is accurate. But in terms of pre-test uh, before going for the procedure, there are tests available and um, PET scans, PET, echocardiography, and cardiac MR, and CT scans is new modality. CT has some of the recent uh, developments, probably will not discuss because they're very recent development in the field of viability assessments. In terms of principle, you can see these are uh, the modalities look into different aspects of viability. Like in PET scan, they look at preserved metabolic activity. They have hypoperfusions, they are dysfunctional, but they have preserved metabolic activity like the uh, preservation of glucose uptake, which is assessed by PET scan. MRI and SPEC look at this membrane integrity because is the membrane in is intact. And they can uptake the, some of the traces that are used in SPEC and also in MRI. And whether in echocardiography, which you look for in stress-induced uh, myocardial dysfunctions, which recover, this is a contractile reserve. And also the MR has advantage of assessing the myocardial scar, which is unique uh, compared to other modalities. And obviously CT scans go for hyper enhancements that we're not discussing because they're very recent things. So just a few of the important uh, points to pick up from the investigation. PET scan we know um, is not available, but then it's on the ideal test. And um, we, when we look at the imbalance, disbalance between the perfusions, which are reduced, but the metabolism is preserved at least at rest. And some of the images you can see that here, uh, where the mismatch of uh, perfusion and uh, uh, the viability is glucose uptake, which is preserved. That means the microbial segments are viable. And these are continuous variable. And the more important is that the amount of dysfunctional, but which are preserved uh, of viability. And in either start some beyond certain segments, beyond certain percentages, the benefit of revascularization probably will be present. PET has disadvantages, and I think to us, obviously, is not available most of the places, but, um, uh, but this is quantitative. It is better presentation and probably better uh, imaging in terms of compared to SPEC. And, but it, unlike MRI, you cannot differentiate between subendocardial or subepicardial, or even the degree of uh, uh, study, the micro segments. But look at the studies of PET scan. These are old studies. These numbers of patients are small. And you can see here that the ejection fraction is the range of 30 to 40. And if you look at the segmental recovery after in bypass surgery, you can see the sensitivity and specificity is, is in the range of 70s and uh, specificity in the range of 80s. So 80% sensitivity and specificity in the range of 70%, which are in the old, older generation trial. The second modality, which are, I think, available uh, more frequently compared to PET scan is uh, SPEC. Microbial perfusion imaging uh, and tellium is one of the things commonly used and uh, system maybe is not a uh, good agent for uh, uh, myocardial viability. The uh, principal already have said that because of it, look at the integrity of the cellular membrane. So tellium is taken up by sodium potassium ATPs. If it's present, that means the myocardium is viable. 
and uh, these are the familiar image you know we have to do short axis and horizontal and vertical long axis and normally if you give thallium and uh, due to myocardium which are viable they will have uh, increased redistribution beyond certain hours three to four hours on even an, as late as late as 24 hours so that means if these redistributions let myocardial images uh, source preserve integrity by uh, delayed uh, clearing from the myocardial segment that is they are viable as you can see here is that um, the, in the late images, the microreal integrity is preserved by showing the hyper by telium scans. If we look at the results, again, these are older studies, uh, number of patients are small individual studies, but look at the uh, predictable in terms of segmental recovery or improvement of the microreal functions after surgery. Sensitivity and specificity is, is not very specific, 54 only in general, overall median, but the sensitivity is very high. Uh, compared to PET. So SPEC have some disadvantages, obviously not available in most other places. It is attenuation, still in the inferior segments. And uh, like um, like PET scan, also it cannot differentiate epicardial from endocardial viability. ECO, I think the most commonly used is available, may not be used that much, but it certainly is available. And the hallmark of echocardiography is obviously stress-induced contractile reserve and the typical biphasic response where Dysfunctional myocardium, which have improvement of contraction at low, low dose of vitamin and which all again become dysfunctional at high dose is a hallmark of viability. Other parameters are not very specific and sensitive, but are useful because they're very easy to measure, like LV and diastolic wall thickness. If it is very less, less than six millimeters, it may not be accurate, but is one of the indicators of having actually myocardial scar. On the other hand, if the LV is too much dilated, like LV more than, uh, is more than 130 ml. These are the patients who probably may not recover after an surgery. And tissue recovery is also very exciting, and uh, but not many data in terms of uh, prospective studies. So one of the examples the, in terms of viability, the biophagic response, you can see that the uh, mid inferior segments at low dose, the micro segments do recover uh, compared to at rest images. And if we do high dose of vitamin more than 10, then again become dysfunctional because at a very high dose of the vitamin, the micro segments, the uh, index segments, the blood flow is not good enough to uh, maintain contractility. If we see the uh, predictive uh, for in terms of recovery of microreal functions after uh, the surgery, you can see it is very is really highly specific compared to compared to spec images and sensitivity in the range of 84 percent. Stress you have limitations that we know. I think that is a, one of the limitations that is available. Um, is a poor acoustic window and uh, is a, to a certain extent is more uh, more subjective uh, compared to other images. But we look at the, some of the studies uh, which have uh, these are old studies before 2000s uh, which have looked into the recovery of these are not clinical uh, endpoint. These are endpoint in terms of the imaging and then subsequent microreal recovery after surgery. The retrospective studies. You can see the sensitivity and specificity are different in the range of 80s and 50 to 70s. Uh, so these are some, limit, some limitations. But cardiac MRI is a new, completely relatively new uh, modality, and it has certain advantages in terms of diagnosis. One is um, LV and diastolic wall thickness, less than 5.5 is not a very specific, but it's one of the, mark, one of the marker of having a scar. So if it is too thin, this may be scar. And inotropic reserve like dopamine the stress echo, and also, it also gives myocardial uh, scar extent by late uh, gadolinium enhancements. So, somebody who is for us with his enhancement with gadolinium, that means that is scar. So, bright is dead, uh, which is easy to pick up. And also, the degree of scar, but is a transmural or, or like less than 25 or more than 75. So, if the hyperenergy is more than 75, that means almost two thirds is scarred then that probability of having recovery after surgery is less. If it's less than 25%, is also recovery is good. Or any in between. So these are continuous variables. So degree of segments involved, number of segments involved, also the percentage of the transfer will, will give an idea how far the surgery will be helpful. This is one of the examples. You can see the anterior segments. The myocardium is thin. And actually, you can see that almost 50% of the segments actually have late gadolinium enhancements, saying that these are probably scar uh, more than 50% and probably not going to recover after surgery. So MR has advantages. One of the advantages actually is uh, it can have additional diagnosis, especially to differentiate from ischemic cardiomyopathy and non-ischemic and other inflative disease. So additional diagnosis, mechanical complications. But obviously CMR is not available and it's a very high-end learning curve and uh, in our settings is, is, is not available. 
but I want the better modality nowadays in terms of assessment of viability. Now, if we look at some of the data in terms of, again, these are all data, in the old data before 2000, uh, in terms of uh, recovery after surgery, you can see that um, um, these are meta-analysis. You can see those who have non-viable segments, their prognosis actually is worse. You can see that they, the, the events rate are higher, but then whether you do surgery or, or medical therapy, then there's no major differences. That means they have no non-viable segments, they can be sent for medical treatment. Whereas those who have viable segments, then actually they do worse with uh, medical therapy. So this person do better with a coronary bypass surgery. But important things that these are the studies before 2000, and in those uh, times, the medical therapy was not uh, that good enough. There no beta blocker I used, and including medicines like used nowadays, like MRA and uh, RNA and LGLT inhibitors are not, not used in this time, including beta blockers. So for this data probably may not be relevant in our context where medical therapy is until it's better. Now, what are the clinical outcome? Probably more important to the patients is that uh, these data that we have discussed uh, in terms of outcome, these are retrospective then uh, medical therapy was not good enough, beta blocker are not used, so these are before uh, 2000. But if we can pick up the, some of the important uh, studies, this is uh, widely uh, quoted and all the better studies in terms of assessment of myocardial viability in uh, LV dysfunctions with multivessel disease. Here you can see that LV dysfunction less than 35 percent, where that are randomized to medical therapy alone, medical therapy per plus CABG and all third was medical therapy plus CABG plus surgical ventricular reverse constructions and that are most of us are aware of that. You can see that whether it's a medical therapy or CABG, the primary endpoint was total mortality. So you can see that primary uh, event was not significant, whether these patients who have ejection fraction less than 35, whether medical therapy or CABG, their actually event are primary endpoints are similar. Although there are differences in terms of secondary endpoint. So if the patient is sent for surgery, they, they, they are probably dying from cardiovascular disease is actually lower, although p-value is less 0.05. But if you add uh, uh, hospitalizations for cardiovascular cause plus CV mortality, then, then the, the benefit is more in favor of CVG and a strong p-value. So probably at least if we're preventing, we're preventing cardiovascular death, if not total death, and then these patients are less uh, hospitalized, which may be important some, for some patients. I think those are one of the better studies in terms of and re in, done in recent times for this category of patients. But the, importantly for our discussion, if you look at the viability in the CIST, uh, there's a sub, there, there, there is a sub study of almost 50% of the patients where viability was assessed. Here, the theory was that half of the patients roughly the myocardial viability was assessed and then were randomized for medical treatment versus CAVG. And you can see that the spec and the vitamin was used equal. And almost, you can see out of almost 1200 percent of streets, 600 percent were randomized for, uh, not randomized for effort for viability assessment, and half of them are randomized to uh, surgery versus medical therapy. And you can see the one thing is that, uh, like in previous trial, the, if a person have viability, this person actually have better prognosis compared to the previous trial. But now, the, because in 2000, we have better medical therapy. So with viability, they have better prognosis in terms of mortality, also in terms of uh, cardiovascular mortality, even though in multivariate analysis, events was not significant, but certainly the numbers are less with a viable myocardium, which gives an additional uh, prognosing importance. Similarly, if we add mortality plus hospitalizations, these are all in favor of uh, viability, that viable myocardium, they have a better prognosis. But most important is that uh, if, we, if we randomize, for viability or no viability, and then the mode of therapy, the surgery or medical treatment, there's hardly any difference. So if viability or no viability, if we send for surgery, or if we do not send for surgery, the prognosis does not make any, dif any difference. So what is important is that, so whether do CAVG or medical therapy, patient have LV ejection fraction less than 35, then actually viability testing is not useful in on that aspect of uh, uh, improving prognosis, which was actually the initial hypothesis was actually not proven. So the, the stage viability hypothesis, that if we assess viability, that are not useful in terms of giving a prognosis and to choose therapy. Although there are limitations of this study because uh, the selection or referring a patients for viability was not randomized. It was based on uh, based on um, uh, subjective criteria, the discretion of the operator. 
but certainly this is one of the better studies, larger studies to decide the la relatively recent medical therapy in patients who have low ejection fractions. If not only the, um, the uh, of stitch, but we have also other few uh, recent trial where we have seen this trial where PET scan was done and then were randomized depending on the PET scan or standard of care without PET, which is the uh, things we are doing in, at least in our clinical practice, not, uh, not sending for PET. So PET or versus no PET and then standard of care, there are hardly any difference. Again, if you see the heart failure results trial in 2011, patients with viable myocardium sent for medical therapy or viable myocardium, then angiogram followed by revascularizations. Actually, this trial was stopped prematurely because there's no benefit of revascularizations. But this gives an idea probably, you did not have uh, good quality data to say that Viability assessments may not have a, a effect in terms of choosing a therapy, whether it be medical therapy or severe will have additional advantages. Again, I think that is, I think, limitation of assessment of myocardial viability because in this trial, they have shown that those patients who have extensive left main disease, like extended like left main disease, free vessel disease, proximal LED, lower EF, EF less than uh, 24%, high anxiolytic volume. So these are the patients who actually do benefit from surgery. And uh, the, one of the theories is that uh, like in previous trial, it's not always the myocardial recovery. It probably the additional benefit of myocardial revascularization like CABG, because it may not be only because of uh, improvement of myocardial function, but probably also uh, some of the effect like uh, future event uh, reductions like microinfarctions and even electrical stability. So, so that gives an idea that probably viability assessments may be only one of the factors that has to be considered while assessing these kind of patients. So for us, uh, we are running behind time. So, so can half a minute. Yeah, it's the last presentation. I mean, the last slide. So I think the important is that the complexities in clinical decision making, viability is one aspect. And beyond viability, we have to look at the symptoms, angina, the coronary anatomy, the age, the mitral regurgitation, renal disease. And I think most important for us is that good quality medical therapy is indispensable. So we have more better medical therapy that already been discussed. So, so last slide, obviously you have imaging modalities which can use depending on the availability, viability and prognosis, yes. Interaction is not a continuous, is not mutually exclusive. And certainly at least we have better medical therapy to offer in patients who have heart failure, low ejection fractions with multivessel disease. Thank you.